Good morning. So looking here at two albums I own of the band Blind Melon. <clears throat> so Blind Melon were a broadly alternative rock band uh, that would had their peak in the early 90s and lost a key member. They're still going... They broke up, but they've, they've reformed like so many of those bands have with a new singer. And they're still, I guess, touring today, nowadays. But um, for all intents and purposes, they are, they had basically a, a <clears throat> excuse me, a five-year career, I guess. Um, so they, I think they formed about 1990. And their singer, Shannon Hoon, who, like so many bands... He was really the kind of the main focus of the band. Um, he died in 95 and that kind of brought it into to them as a gone concern. Um, so the two albums I have are this one, which is the, the self-titled one. This is from 1992, Blind Melon, and Soup, which is from 95. Yes, 95. Both of these are secondhand. I got this one from a secondhand charity thrift store uh, and it would have cost about a dollar like about two years ago. Um, <laughs> if you were around in the 90s, you probably would have heard or seen the song um, No Rain, which is track seven on this. Uh, so it's quite a nice song, and you still hear it on on you know um, classic rock radio or just rock radio nowadays. I hear it from time to time, um, and the video, I guess, kind of got some traction on MTV in the US, and because it, it had the girl, little girl, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> dressed up as a bumblebee, kind of like that, well, not kind of like that. That's not actually her though. I always thought that was the same kid from the video, but that's actually. A photograph of one of the members of the band, I think the drummer, his sister. And this is from like not, not the late 70s, this photo was taken. And they they were the band were at the guy's house and um and they saw one of them saw the photo and and thought, hey, we should use that as the cover the cover photo for our album, which is kind of strange, not the kind of thing I would ever see and imagine to be a cover a, a a yeah album art but i guess you know that's why i'm not a artist um yes it was the drummer so it's the drummer's sister anyway in the video for, for no rain they used a similar a girl dressed up in a bumblebee suit and i guess that appealed to people it was kind of cutesy and um like i said it's a nice song as well uh, the other song, the first song I ever heard from this was, to was Tones of Home, which is track two. I heard that in 1990, I'm trying to think, one, two, three, would it be 94, early 1994, because I remember I talked about something similar the other day. I, there used to be these compilations of alternative rock in the early 90s called The Trip, number trip one through, I think they got to number eight eventually. But uh, I, one of the very first CDs, not the first, but one of the first CDs I ever bought was a compilation called The Trip 2. And on that, there was the Smashing Pumpkins, Stone Table Pilots, White Zombie, Fishbone, Babes in Toyland, Earth, um, Dinosaur Jr., and uh, Lemon Hens, a bunch of other bands as well. But one of the bands was Blind Melon, and the song was Tones of Home. And... I prefer Tones of Home to No Rain. Um, it's got a nice kind of like, a, I guess, what do you, I don't know what you call it, what you describe it as, a swing or something. This first album of theirs is quite bluesy, blues, I almost kind of, it kind of didn't fit with the rest of the stuff going around that time. This came out in 92, which was a year after Nevermind and Gish and Dirt and Ten. And, you know, the ones that came after it, uh, you know, Core by Stone Hill Pilots and um, Versus, I think, came out the year after and um, so on and so forth. 
those were a lot uh, had a lot darker energy. Most of those ones I just named, a lot darker and a lot more of a metallic edge. You know, as you can always say, you can always hear the Black Sabbath in most of those bands. Maybe Pearl Jam, it's harder to find the Black Sabbath, but certainly those other ones. Whereas if you listen to Blind Melon, you'd say that you don't hear the Black Sabbath as much. And when I say the Black Sabbath, I mean as, again, broadly, metal influence. Because that was the thing about alternative rock grunge in the early 90s was it was meant to be the marriage of punk and a little bit of kind of 70s, 80s metal with some pop sensibility all mishmashed together into this thing called alternative rock. <coughs> but um, some of the bands that we lump in with that don't necessarily fit at all with the rest of them. And I'd say that certainly this first album by Blind Melon is a lot more bluesy and folk rocky and a little bit of a psychedelia psychedelia i think in the second album more psychedelia but i'd say the the line you would draw there would be back towards um more southern rock bands and maybe led zeppelin especially led zeppelin 3 um but it's not a, it's not a bad album at all i think it's an it's a, a kind of a three out of three star album you know um and it kind of got them on the map. I think it sold pretty dis decently. I think they ended up kind of selling a couple of million copies at least. This was put out on Capitol Records. You can see the condition of the booklet is fine. Some bad photos. Collage. Now Shannon Hoon, the singer, was from... I guess this is something else that kind of sets the band apart. Is that they, they weren't um, from Seattle. Not that all those bands I just named before are from Seattle, or, you know, originally either, but well, I didn't say Soundgarden, did I? And they, they're a 91 release as well. But it was, most of those bands were kind of, I guess, West Coast, you know, either from LA and moved up to Seattle and some from other parts as well. But uh, but these guys, um, Shannon Hume was from Indiana and the rest of the band were from Mississippi. So kind of Midwest, Southern and again, you can hear that Southern rock influence in the music. And uh, he was from Lafayette, excuse me, Lafayette, um, Indiana, which is, I'm pretty sure, if not the same town in the same vicinity as where Axl Rose came from. And if you see uh, or hear the Guns N' Roses song, Don't Cry, Shannon Hoon is actually singing back up vocals and that and he's also on the video you can see him he's singing when they're on top of that building doing the live performance of it and interspersed with the other parts of the video you can see shannon hoon uh singing in the background um apparently his shannon hoon's older sister was high school friends with axel so it must have been the same place if if they went to high school together and then when shannon hoon moved to la in the late 80s he um reconnected with Axel, I guess, and kind of formed a friendship. And Axel invited invited him to do the, the backing vocals on a couple of songs and, like I said, was in the video. And this was pre-fame. This was pre-Bly Mellon getting any kind of... This was, you know, what? User Illusion was 90... Well, 91, another 91 album. Was it 91? Yes, 91. And um, their first album was 92, so it was before they were famous in any way. Um... <clears throat> so yeah, I see the condition's pretty good. You can see it's got that kind of 90s uh, plastic I've talked before. It kind of has this cloudiness to it, which it's not just because it's old. This is probably about, you know, getting on 30 years old, this CD now. If it came out in 92, someone in New Zealand would have bought it around 92, 93, 94. And you can see by looking at that age... So it's 30-year-old plastic, but also I've said before that the plastic they used in the 90s for CD case covers was like a different different formula of some kind, and it clouded a lot quicker. And you can just look at it and see it. And then whereas somewhere around the, um, the 2000s, they switched the plastic, and it keeps its clarity a lot better. <clears throat> this is their second album, Soup. 
and like I said, it came out in 95. This one was a bit more expensive. I got this probably for about three or four dollars because I got that from Real Groovy Records, which is a, a second hand music store I've talked about quite extensively in some other videos covering the um, the uh, the sticker that says Blind Melon Soup. It's quite a, a different kind of uh, album art again. The guy eating soup, and you can see it's alphabet soup because we got Blind Melon written in there. It's also come out on Capitol Records. <clears throat> so their first album was so sold pretty well. They would kind of uh, had pretty decent success uh, with their video. Okay, so it sold even better than I met. They sold four times platinum in the US. Four, so they probably probably did about six million worldwide. I would say five to six million. So that's that's a pretty good you know sales considering they're not up in that top echelon when we say of those '90s bands like Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. <clears throat> they're kind of a, a, a level or two below them. So five million sales is uh, five six million sales on a deb debut album is pretty good. So they came up, and I guess the the record company would have had pretty high expectations for Soup <clears throat> to you know follow up. However, by '95, you could say that the wheels had kind of started to fall off. It wasn't guaranteed that the, those bands were going to sell. Kurt Cobain had been dead for a year. And, um, you know, I don't know the exact sales numbers, but I'm sure, you know, uh, for example, Down on the Upside by Soundgarden, which came out in 96, sold less than Super Unknown. And a Neutro, which came out in 93, sold less than Nevermind, but everything's going to sell less than Nevermind. And um, I think Vitology, which came out in 94, 95, late 94, sold less than verses in 10. You know, there was a, a slight downward trajectory. Things were kind of starting to change and maybe going towards something else. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, this album was released and it just, uh, I guess, <coughs> bluntly or frankly, it didn't do anywhere near as well as what they were hoping. Um, I can't see any specific sales things for the US but I can see it got to number 28 on the US Billboard charts which isn't a great result for what they were expecting however I'd say this is quite a lot better as an album than their debut it's a lot more interesting it has a lot more breadth it's a lot I guess weirder and it's moves oh it still ha i say has its roots in that kind of bluesy folky southern rock type stuff and i think Sh shannon hoon's voice is always gonna bring it back towards that anyway but there's a lot more experimentation and a lot more kind of out there a lot more alternative rocky and i didn't know this to be honest, I didn't know anything about this album. I knew these guys, like I said, I just talked about my history of knowing, you know, seeing them on TV and stuff. Then I knew that Shannon Hoon died in 95, shortly after this album was released. But really, I thought they just kind of dropped off. I didn't even know anything about this album. Then about, I don't know, 10 years ago, no, maybe probably a little bit more than 10 years ago, I saw the video for Toes Across the Floor, which is track, what, three or four on this? Track five. And I saw Shannon Hoon had short hair, and I'd never heard that. And I thought, wow, the song sounds really different from, you know, No Rain and Tones of Home. It sounded a lot kind of uh, just different. Kind of got it's got that. I love the part of that the um, the the syncopated guitars they do. I think it's in the chorus, or is it would it be the chorus or the pre-chorus? And then they have this kind of flute or pan flute sound kind of buried in the mix. You can kind of just hear it when they're doing uh, the chorus part. So I'm not sure it's really a chorus. It's kind of a, a strangely constructed song as well, which is another reason why I like it. It's kind of like, it's just different. And so I heard that. I was like, okay, well, I didn't even... I didn't even really consider those guys. I never really thought about them because I didn't even... I'm, I knew they'd released other stuff, but I didn't know anything about it. And when I heard that, it kind of made me interested in, you know, listening more to that album. So I bought that. And um, it's just, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting album. And it's... 
Galaxy was the other single, which I reckon is a good song as well. Um, songs like Dump Truck and Car Seat, The Duke, St. Andrew's Fall. They're just, I don't know. It, it's like a perfect position between experimental alternative type music, but still keeping it within kind of, I guess, having some catchiness or melody and, and a certain amount of pop kind of appeal. Um, I think that album catches all that, captures all those things, but it, it really didn't do well commercially or at the time particularly um, critically either. It got 1.5 stars out of 5 by Rolling Stone, and they really slated it in September of 95. However, it then had this kind of legacy after, and it apparently, again, I didn't know this, has appeared on multiple most underrated or overlooked 90s alternative rock albums. Or the, the albums you didn't know, or the albums you may have missed, you know. So, so kind of people went back maybe and revisited and realized the appeal of it after the fact, after he died. Um, so, yeah. It's an interesting, again, uh, kind of CD there. Again, in good condition. G generally, when you buy things from Real Groovy Records uh, as a secondhand. CD, they're selling, they're not going to sell um, anything terrible quality. So you're going to always have a certain uh, base level of quality. So yeah, he cut his hair, Shannon Home. So whenever I imagine him, I imagine him kind of from the um, No Rain Tones of Home video where he had long, straight hair, kind of like a hippie, you know. But um, the, if you see Toes Across the Floor, he's got kind of short hair, quite a handsome guy. And he... Um, and then I saw another video, uh, sorry, another photo in Google Images and he had a shaved head. So when he passed away, I'm not sure how long his hair was. Not really important. <laughs> I'm talking about the length of his hair. Just my point is, I guess, is that they evolved past this album, but I think a lot of people weren't there to see it because this didn't do well at all. And then he was he was gone within uh, within less than a year after this came out. So he died of a drug overdose on his tour bus. He had had a lot of substance abuse issues. His drug counselor had counseled the band not to go on tour. His management don't take him on tour. He's not ready. He's, 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 he needs to be in rehab, but he went on tour anyway. And um, <clears throat> another of that generation uh, taken by drugs, which is a shame. So, yeah. Uh, they, like I said, they kind of continued. They released a kind of outtakes album after he died called Nico, which is the the name of his um, child, I think his daughter, who we left behind. And they got together and made another album with another singer I've I've never listened to. Um, not I've got anything against that. It's just you know, you <laughs> in a world of so many other things to listen to. I guess I, listening to the Ply Melon release with a new singer is not really on the top of my list to do. But anyway. Two good albums. I'd say this, like I said, three out of five. This one, I would go a four out of five easy. Four out of five, you know, out of five, you don't have much range. Let's say out of 10, I'd say 8.5 out of, out of 10 for this. And whereas this may be more of a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Uh, so yeah, Blind Melon, Blind Melon and Soup. Thank you for watching.